Hi, my name is Ashiga Latifa from Arizu University in Dar es Salaam. I'm going to take you through climate change projects, the case study of Kigogo Sabwad. By explaining different strategies to mitigate flood, community involvement, and community capacities on initiatives. From the meeting which was conducted on January 2022, participated by the local leaders and team from Arizu University, as well as the site visitation, helped us to determine different strategies and challenges facing Kigogo Sabwad. Side of challenges facing Kigogo Sabwad, they include poor soil waste management, where there is high hazard disposal of waste. There is no clear area allocated for the waste disposal. Another one includes poor drainage system and increased informal settlement development, which all of this affects the flow of storm water to Simbaz and Kabangu River, which at the end creates a stagnant water. For the initiatives are divided into two levels, which are community and individual level. For the community levels, the first initiative includes plantation of palm tree, which are financed by the Red Cross. The second one is the building high raised wall along the river edge. The third one includes expansion and cleaning of the river, which are financed by the government owns a year. Other financial on these strategies include oil company which conduct their business activity at Kigogo Subway, who they contribute oil to land excavators. The last one includes the construction of drainage system to facilitate and ease the flow of storm water to the river. At individual level, the initiatives include raising the foundation level, construction of the edge around the houses, arranging the sandbags, and conducting agricultural activities, which in turn make the soil sediment loose and easily eroded. The residents of Kigogo Subward have a tendency to contribute financially to the community initiatives, but the effort does not work out for the long term. And all initiatives at individual and community level do not work out to other rain season. For example, the raised wall along the river bank was done four times, and the river keeps in, in its depths and causing the rising wall to shrink. From the Ramani Huria project, which was conducted at Kigogo Subward, the Ramani Huria maps are productive to community in determining the flood prone areas and also are useful in the national initiatives of shifting the residents from the flood prone areas. All the initiatives are directed toward ensuring the safety of each community from individual level to the national level, because no one is safe until everyone is safe. Thank you. On the 15th of September 1968, following an unusually heavy rainfall during a storm, large extents of Lowsham in southeast London were subject to serious floods, taking several lives. While the Thames did not flood, its tributaries did. The rainfall has caused Lewisham's two rivers, rivers Quaggy and Ravensbourne, to burst their banks, flooding Lewisham with several feet of water. The historic flood mitigation method of channelizing had made matters worse, speeding the flow of water downstream and compounding flooding. The response to this disaster, perhaps typical of its time, was to construct culverts and deepened concrete channels, increasing the flow capacity of the rivers and often burying them underground. Part of the rationale for this was a supposed need for increased waterway capacity to deal with the effects of water runoff from recent development. During our observation, we noted that there were different brick materials towards the end of the Ravensbourne River. The algae present on the sides of the river wall indicates that water levels surpassed the original capacity. This could have prompted the additional construction seen through the different brick materials to prevent flooding into roads and access to the nearby Deptford Bridge DLR station. In the 1990s, calls emerged for a different approach to flood mitigation, seeking waterside amenity, increased biodiversity and greater resilience. Residents and groups like QWAG or the Quaggy Waterways Action Group 
asserted the value of schemes based around flood storage that sought to absorb excess water in a permeable landscape rather than channel it downstream. However, this approach does not mean that flood risks are eradicated. The Environment Agency estimated that in 2015, 400 homes and 280 businesses would benefit from reduced chances of flooding. Thames 21 have suggested the introduction of more widely sustainable urban drainage systems, or SUDs, to help absorb water runoff from development rather than channeling it into the rivers.